Let's get back to the breaking news. We've been following this hour. This is a live news conference with the Brewers brass as baseball is back. Let's listen in. Our, our fans have been, their patience has been tested. Uh, my patience has been tested. I think uh, it, it's been a uh, very, very stressful, um, frustrating journey. Uh, but the fact is that, uh, you know, we have obviously something to celebrate, obviously pending ratification, um, that we can have a season. It looks like it's going to be a full season, which is very important. Um, the integrity of baseball and playing 162 games makes it a unique uh, sport and uh, it's, it's great to see that. It's great to see a lot of hard work went into what looks like it's going to be a completed deal. Um, there was a lot of late nights, a lot of stress, a lot of, uh, a lot of brain power exercise to get to this place. Um, I think you have to give credit to a lot of people in those rooms um, you know, to, to get to this point. Collective bargaining agreements are complicated. Baseball is complicated. These, these points that to many fans seem silly or esoteric um, have a lot of impact. Um, and this is you know, an agreement that's going to be around for a while. So it's very important for both parties to be prudent, careful, deliberative. And unfortunately, sometimes it's messy, time consuming, gets delayed. Um, but the reality is, is you know, this is a very good milestone for us. Uh, and there's been a lot of uh, consternation from our fans. We're hearing it. They have every right to be concerned and disappointed and depressed for the last several months as we're trying to navigate through something. And, uh, you know, I can tell you from talking to fans that uh, their, their passion for the Brewers um, through good times, tough times, is there. I expected them to be very passionate about what was going on through this process. They have demonstrated that, but they have also stayed with us. Um, the, the, uh, the, the fans, the season seat holders who have bought tickets have stayed with us. Um, we're excited to look like we're able to now launch with a full-scale selling season. Uh, you know, we're still waiting for a word uh, from MLB on the schedule. Uh, and what that all means and, and literally things like opening day, although based on what we see, I think we can sort of vector where we think we're going to be playing an opening day uh, in Milwaukee, what date that's going to be. But again, a lot of details to be uh, determined or figured out or communicated to the clubs. And, and I know that MLB, once this is ratified by the owners and players, will get that out there. And then our job is to then, you know, as quickly as possible, communicate what the fans need to know and then get excited for what we think is going to be a very special 2022 Brewer season. How long do you think it's going to take to ratify this agreement? Uh, obviously, once it is ratified, signings can begin. So I know there's a timetable here that obviously wants to look at it. Both players and, and the owners want to take a look at this. But I, ideally, I, it sounds like you want to get this thing done tonight. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's, that's, that's the goal. There, there's, you know, we, we are. Obviously, um, looking to you know the goal is to get 162 games played in, in what is going to be a, a delayed start to the season. So every every day is precious, uh, and we want to give the players a meaningful spring training so that um, we can have games and they're game ready to start playing regular season games. So yeah, I think the ratification process is intended to happen very quickly, um, and and uh, I think everybody understands. Um, you know, we've got to this point. Let's let's bring it over the finish line officially, formally, and let's get the players traveling. Let's get them into camp, and let's get going. You mentioned your, your patience being tested. I'm sure when the first seven games get canceled, obviously there's home series with Brewers. How important to have those home games back with a full game schedule uh, you know, comes up here? Yeah, no, very important. You know, I've I've read some reports that the you know teams didn't care about losing April games. That, from our perspective, that was the exact opposite. Every game is important to us, um, so it's great that what it looks like is happening is we're going to get you know 81 home games, and and again as the, as I said before the 162 game baseball season is long, but it means something. Um, if you are winning your division after the end of 162 games or get a playoff spot, even in potentially an expanded season, that's a that's a big accomplishment, and that separates baseball from other sports. So I, I really think it's important that we got those home games. Again, every home game is precious. Um, and, and we're looking forward to, you know, if we have to be a little nimble in terms of when those games are going to be rescheduled or how they're rescheduled, we'll pivot, we'll adapt. Um, they'll, they'll make sure those, those games are meaningful, hopefully, for the team on the field and, and exciting for the fans. And, 
you know, we're obviously working feverishly to come up with some really fun initiatives to the fans to, to frankly thank them for having gone through this journey um, and appreciative of their loyalty notwithstanding we've tested it and it wasn't by design but it was reality we tested our fans this off season and it's been a test for our fans frankly the last few seasons and our fans have delivered um, you know the, the the season ticket renewals that we've seen this off season even during the uncertainty have been off the charts and our ticket sales are strong and even in an environment when we didn't know when the games were going to start or all the uncertainty um, the fans want to see the Brewers, and they're, they're showing it um, with their pocketbooks. And now our job is to deliver on that. Uh, and we've got some ideas that we're percolating and, and, and we'll announce, not today, obviously, but in the forthcoming days and weeks about some of the things we're doing to, to recognize and cherish the fans, especially for, for what has been a difficult offseason for them. Frank, you mentioned your frustrations and the organization's frustrations. Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but was the number one thing or close to the top of the list just not knowing what to tell fans? about tickets or getting reimbursements or when the schedule started or whatever was that the top thing or was it something else on your mind? no you know all that you know when when fans are excited about the team and and you know they're putting deposits down in season seats or when sponsors are making commitments to partner with us and vendors are making you know, commitments we've got so many full-time part-time employees whose some of all of their livelihood depends on playing games whether it's in phoenix or in milwaukee it weighed. It weighed on me, and I know it weighed on everybody in our offices here. It's, it's, um, it, especially after we've gone through the past few years, and and the thought of you know missing games and people missing paychecks, you know the people that sell the beer here, the people that work the parking lots, uh, the people that provide security, um, both here in Phoenix, you know, for them to have the uncertainty about whether they're going to make money or get paid, that's a burden. And, and I, we felt it. And then you add that to the mix of our fans not knowing, making commitments. I had so many people tell me how they made plans for March to go to spring training. And that was in flux. People weren't sure what to do about the regular season. And, I, you know, we didn't want to give false promises. You know, I couldn't tell fans anything with certainty. And it was hard because you want to tell your fans something. But I couldn't because we just didn't know. You know, this is not something where the, the, the major league clubs unilaterally could determine the pathway. Um, this is a, an agreement that required the cooperation and hard bargaining from both sides. So I think what we told our fans is, is you know, we hear you. We would love to give answers. We couldn't give answers. And that, yeah, that's tough. That's tough to do um, to your customers, it's tough to do your employees, tough to do your partners. Um, and, and again, um, you know, it looks like, again, we're, we're in a situation where it's pending ratification. We, we now have some clarity and some certainty, and that's, that's the best news we can deliver to our, to our, our fan base. Rick, you talked about the fans. Were you in contact with any of the businesses in Milwaukee that heavily rely on the Brewers playing, whether it's just having fans come to their bars or even offering the shuttle services? They were really worried about losing out on these games Thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, we, we, you know, we did not that long ago, uh, the MMAC did an economic impact study um, that showed that the, the, the ballpark and the team have generated two and a half billion dollars incremental revenue to the state of Wisconsin since the ballpark was built and the team was playing here. So we understand, you know, the importance that we bring to the local community and it's not just Milwaukee, it's statewide. You know, we have a huge number of fans who come from all over, La Crosse, Eau Claire, Madison, Green Bay, um, Racine, Kenosha, all these places. Businesses rely on that, you know, thinking about it, like you said, the bar shuttles, the restaurants, the hotels. Um, you know, we have a lot of people coming from that state below us and they spend money in hotels and restaurants. Uh, and, and people were, did have concerns, and we understand the relevance we bring to this com you know, community and economy. And again, it all weighed on us because we're talking jobs, right? We're talking livelihoods. We're talking uh, people who rely on this team and this ballpark for, for income and for entertainment. And we couldn't promise that we were going to deliver, and that's a really hard thing for us to have to bear. And our fans and our partners and our, and our vendors I, I, you know, it, it is incredible how special we have it here and how great our fans are. And I, I, I know everybody says that in every, in every market, but if you think about what has happened in our industry in the last few years and how supportive the fans have been, we, you know, we came out of a, a pandemic in 2020 with no fans. 
we lost a whole year of engagement with our fans. In 2021, we start reduced capacity, and then half the season goes by before we're at full capacity. Fans show up, and they showed up in great numbers. And, and, uh, and frankly, even in times when people were a little concerned about mass gatherings, they showed up, supported this team, television ratings to the roof, our attendance was top 10. Um, you know, we, our partners, our sponsors fully supported us. People did not abandon us, they rallied around us. This year, we, we threw another test at them, um, somewhat of our own doing, but they supported us. Um, I hope not to test them again, but I think the good news is with what looks like a 162 game season with normalcy. It's nice to say that. And, and I think, again, we're looking for some special things on the field, but uh, you know, this was a big milestone to get through, uh, a big hurdle to overcome, and uh, you know, a lot of credit for a lot of people to put a lot of hard work, work into it, notwithstanding the intense glare of the spotlight from, from you fine folks locally and nationally. Um, and that's the spotlight baseball gets, and that's part of the, the thing. Baseball gets extra special treatment in good times and bad. You know, if you look at other sports, I'm not sure that another... All right, you've been listening to a live, new, live news conference with Rick Schlesinger, uh, Milwaukee Brewers, talking about the end of the lockout and the return to baseball. Um, I'm sure you at home have some questions about what this means. I'm going to walk you through what we know from various reports. Spring training, players can report as early as tomorrow to spring training. All players need to be at spring training by Sunday. We will see our first spring training games played either March 17th or March 18th, depending on the team. According to ESPN, the season would be set to start on April 7th. If the schedule stays as it is right now, that means the Brewers would be opening their seasons at Cubs. So the Brewers right now, if the schedule stays the same, which I can't see Major League Baseball throwing out the schedule, just picking it up uh, wh uh, where it would, the Brewers right now are set to open the season on April 7th in Chicago against the Cubs. That would make the home opener for the Brewers Monday the 14th against the Cardinals. What we don't know is how they're going to get 162 games in with a week of the season already gone. Will they extend the, the season a week? Will we have double headers uh, of those games that we missed uh, scattered throughout the season? That's not clear right now, but we do know that spring training games will start middle of next week and the Brewers will have uh, their home opener on the uh, 14th right now that is scheduled to be against the Cardinals. We're going to step away for a break. Stay with us.